Hi, Rob from Bushkill Farms here. I want to spend a few minutes today and talk about BVAX. Uh, but before we get going, uh, I apologize if you hear the wind uh, in the background. It's early April here in the Catskill Mountains and the wind is uh, howling at times. So, um, I often get asked, you know, what makes the Bushkill BVAC uh, better or what BVAC is best. Um, I don't want to say there's one that's better than the other. They all have their pros and cons. So it comes down to a matter of personal preference and how you plan on using it. Uh, what I plan to go over here today is um, what the deficiencies in this type of box, box in a box design that led me to design the Bushkill BVAC. Uh, the box in a box concept seems to be what most of the BVACs are based on. And basically, it's a screen box that your bees end up in. Um, that's placed inside of a larger box that has your vacuums uh, hooked to it and then uh, my VVAC. One of the things I read uh, that people that have doubts about my VAC is that they don't like about it per se is it's big and bulky. Um, yeah, it might be a little bit more bulky to, depending on how you use it, but just this is how it is in a storage or transportation mode uh, versus the box in a box. And as you can see, it's smaller and actually lays wet less. But uh, to use it, obviously, you have to use a super. Uh, over here, I have my uh, old workhorse. Those that have been following on my blog, uh, this is the original one that I showed building and have used many, many a times. Uh, that one I built with a polystyrene hive body. So if weight is an issue, polystyrene um, is an option. And that one uh, was built oversized. And with 10 frames and the super, lay, weighs less than one pound more than uh, this box within a box. Well, one of the important things to, to keep in mind when you're using a BVAC, whether it's for swarms or during a removal, is overheating. Um, a couple things can lead to that. If the vac is too small and the bees become too congested, uh, they'll overheat. And I have a bucket down here just to, to sh for a principle that you'll see some bee vacs out there that are based upon a five gallon bucket. Um, by the time you put a screen in there and the vac motor and stuff, the size of the bee vac is not large enough to, 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 for most swarms or to do a removal for the bees to spend any amount of time in that. First of all, the sun gets on the bucket, uh, it heats up. Uh, second of all, it's just too congested in there. And if you watch a swarm uh, hanging in a tree in the evenings and early morning, you'll see it's nice and tight. They're, they're, they're not overheated. They're keeping warm. And if you go back and, and see them in, in the late afternoon or in, when the sun is, is bright and warm out, they'll be, you know, it could be almost double the size because they stretch themselves out to allow the air to cool them. And if it's a tight spot, like in a five gallon bucket, they can't do that. Um, the other thing with the box in a box design especially if they have windows, is everyone knows sunlight when it goes through the windows gives you a greenhouse effect and, and heats it up. Now, yes, you can, you can keep them out of the sun, but you just got to be very vigilant on it because I've had situations where I've set up to do the removal. I was in the shade. I get an hour or two into it. You know, I'm concentrating on what I'm doing with the cutout, and then all of a sudden I realize the bee back is right in the direct sun. Um, I have lost bees that way. Okay, one of the one of the drawbacks uh, to this type of vac, or or any vac that ends up with the bees in type of a screened-in container, uh, is the fact that you've stressed the bees once already, sucking them in, and personally, I think the stress getting them out uh, is worse than than than, than sucking them in. Um, a couple of problems you end up with. Most of the designs have some type of trap door or something, so you know you can lay it on top of your hive pull out the trap door. Um, unfortunately most of the bees are still clustered hung from the top so the only thing you've really done was any debris, sheetrock or any types of little little construction material or dead bees or stuff that you've sucked up during your removal uh, end up all on the top of your frames. Um, and then you have the bees starting to fly around and you try to do one of these and they don't get them and then you're smashing bees. Uh, sometimes I think the trauma getting them out of your screen and in enclosure is worse than originally uh, sucking them up. All right, this is the Bushkill BVAC, uh, what I designed based upon the deficiencies that we just talked about in this BVAC. Uh, as you can see, 
Uh, it's basically a bottom board, a top board, and you use a regular beehive uh, super. Uh, that way you suck the bees in once and they're in their new home. You don't have to stress them out by transporting them uh, out of the box and into a hive. Uh, basically, this gate opens up, your hose goes in there, so you're actually sucking the bees in the bottom of the back. So what that means is any debris that you do suck up ends up on the bottom board here and not up in the hive in the frames as if you dumped it on the top. Uh, the other thing is for transporting, we talked about overheating. Uh, once you're done uh, doing your removal, this whole top piece where the vacuum slides right out, uh, and as you can see, it's, it's screened, uh, so they have full ventilation for the, for the trip home. Um, we talked a little bit before about size and weight, and yeah, uh, the Bushkill Bee Vac is not going to be one you're going to put on your back and carry up a ladder, but with that said, um, you don't really need to be carrying a Bee Vac up the ladder if you have one that you can set up on the ground. Um, I normally set it up like this on, on a stand or something, and uh, with, with three sections of hose, I can go 24 feet up uh, without any issue. And what's nice about it is, it can sit in the sun because it's just like a regular hive body. You know, the wood has some uh, insulative values that keeps the, the sun from overheating them. And as long as you leave the back running, um, you know, it's, it's taking the hot air off the top, not necessarily so much vacuum that is bothering the bees in the hive because there is a bypass here so you regulate so you have just enough uh, air in the hose to pull the bees and once it gets through the into the hive the, the volume change from the two and a half inch hose to the sixteen and a quarter by nineteen is so great that it you know the suction dies right down to next to nothing uh, so that's some of the features that I've uh, designed into this BVAC over the traditional box in a box design. And one last thing I just want to cover in this video is hoses. I often get a lot of questions on size of hoses, uh, corrugated versus more. Uh, I can say that I've done many and many removals and I swear by the two and a half inch uh, chop back hose. I know people are concerned about the corrugation but do yourself a favor, next time you're in Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards, go over to the shop back section and look at it. Um, yeah, on the outside it looks very rough, but if you put your hand on the inside, it's actually quite smooth and, and not rough at all. You'll see a lot of people recommend going with a smaller uh, inch and a half hose that's smooth. A lot of that hose, although I don't have a piece here, it's very hard uh, and not very pliable to move, makes it more difficult. And the point I try to make about the different sizes is the bigger size, as the bee's going down the hose, the less he's going to be bouncing off the sides. Um, think of it, I, I always like to use the analogy of running down a hallway. If you're running as fast as you can down a two and a half foot hallway that's windy, you're going to be hitting the walls many more times than if you're running down a, say, four or five foot wide hallway uh, at the same speed. So don't be too overly concerned about the corrugations. Like I said, next time you're in the hardware store, just grab yourself of the, of the regular shop vac and, and feel the inside and see that the outside does not represent uh, the inside. Personally, I think diameter is much more important than, than the corrugation. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, please check out our other videos on the Bushkill BVAC to learn more. Thank you.